today we're going to look at something I would consider a good buy. Uh, this is made by M86 Security, which I think turned into 8E6 Security or some other stupid name. I don't know. But um, this is a WFR350. It's a security device, you know, for your um, big corporate network and it blocks intrusions and whatnot. But, okay, I picked this up for about 30 under $35. It was like 33 bucks on eBay. And you can see it's a half-width 1U rack unit. Uh, it's got this big aluminum piece to make it a full rack unit. See? So it'll fit in your rack mount case. It's got a handle on the front for some reason. And what drew me to this one is it came with two... 500 gig Western Digital Scorpio Blacks. Now each one of these is worth about $40. So even if all I do is get a video out of this, it's still worth it because I'll get my money back and more. But it turns out the motherboards actually half decent too. So we're going to get uh, a look at that in a second. So let me just flip it around and we'll take a look at the back. Now what's funny about this is it's screwed in at the back, but it's not screwed in at the front, so you can actually like bend it and stuff like this uh, thumb screw is actually quite bent. So speaking of thumb screw, we'll just take this off, remove the actual device, and you can see this is just a big chunk of steel or aluminum or whatever it is. And on the back of the unit, we've got a 40 millimeter fan, serial port, audio, uh, six USB ports, two Ethernet ports or gigabit Ethernet, DVI and VGA, and some PS2 ports. Now, the power is through this barrel jack, and this is a, uh, the included power supply. It's a FSP group, 5 amp, 12 volt, so it's 60 watts. Uh, it, does work. It's actually UL listed, shockingly. So I ran uh, an under race on the hard drives. They're they're formatted. Uh, they're Linux format, and they're um, it's running CentOS, which is a an open source Linux variant, an all in one networking solution where it's you know your router, your security, your antivirus, all that stuff in one. So. Going back to the front, we've got a 16x2 LCD, and judging by this set of controls, it is uh, made by Crystal Fonts, and as we saw earlier, these are two, um, well this is a 3.5 inch uh, docking bay for 2.5 inch drives, so you can see it. it's actually the size of an old floppy drive or a hard drive, and it's got little locks for each drive, and these just pull out. So I'm going to remove the two drives, take the top off. Now this case is actually quite nice, you know, with the nice M86 logo on it. And it would make an excellent router. Uh, unfortunately, um, it doesn't have space for a slot. So I don't think I'm going to use it, but it just... Uh, got this weird discoloration here but I think that's just from the uh, where the decal is because this is or sorry the paint this is like thicker paint here anyway get rid of that and we'll take a look inside inside we've got a single kind of like one of those pico power power supplies but really it's um just a standard power supply what it's doing is it's taking the 12 volts and switching into all the normal voltages you'd get on an ATX power supply, which is negative 12 volts, 5 volts, that sort of thing. And we've got the module right here with the serial ATA uh, dock with two serial ATA cables running to the motherboard. The motherboard has four serial ATA controllers or ports. It's actually a very nice motherboard. This is using the AMD uh, Turon chip. The X2, I, I think that's what it's called. Um, I'm not that familiar with AMD chips, but we'll, you know, open it up, get a better look at it. The motherboard's actually made by Contron, K-O-N-T-R-O-N, which is, I, I've never even heard of them. 
but uh, you know they seem to make a few different designs and this is a relatively good motherboard I mean especially if you're just going to use it for a server or um, a router but it actually supports up to 32 gigs of memory which is kind of crazy it has a PCI slot and a 16x PCI Express slot and we've got parallel ATA, uh, the aforementioned serial ATA ports, CF card reader, you can boot off that, audio, it's actually very nice. You can see the CPU is using a blower style fan and the 40 millimeter fan is plugged in over here. It is somewhat loud, It pull, the whole system pulls about 50 watts and it does quiet down, The the everything's thermally controlled and will you know, so just lose all the sound after a minute or two. And we've got um, a four pin, well, stuck four pin, there we go, four pin uh, PS4 slash CPU power connector. And, uh, you know, so it does take a regular ATX power supply. Now, I've looked around on this motherboard and on the power supply, and they're both riddled with bad caps. Now, Everything works. This whole system boots. Everything works fine. But these caps are probably going to die real soon. <laughs> so, um, I am still torn on whether or not I want to keep this board. I may just sell the whole thing as is the board as is. I, I'll probably ditch the power supply. And, you know, it's a mini ATX board. You can use it on any system. So, um, hopefully someone can put it to use, but uh, I'm, if I do keep it, I'll recap it. Uh, the, it'll probably cost, based on the number of caps I see, probably like 10 bucks, if not less, to recap the board using, you know, high quality, uh, low, low ESR caps, so I'm still considering it. Now, up here we've got the Crystal Fonts display. This is the uh, CFA 533TMKU. All those letters and stuff just denote whether or not, um, or what color the display is. It's a blue one. Um, we've got a USB connection to the motherboard, and it's running over to here. Everything in this case is really nicely tied down. Well, almost everything. This is the one thing that's kind of sticking out. And yeah, it's just very well, it's a very full case. Like you can see that like there's a million wires running around in here. Overall, it's a very nicely built product. I mean, they even hot glued some pieces down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything out and we'll just get the motherboard and work with that. And I'll probably hook it up to an ATX power supply since I don't really trust this one. Uh, I don't really trust this motherboard, but hey, we'll, we'll <laughs> minimize it by just going with the uh, motherboard only and removing the crappy power supply out of the equation. Now, the controls on the front do let you control uh, all the settings like the gateway address, IP address, all that sort of stuff. So um, there is quite a bit of control over it without actually having to log in. I searched the drives for files and all I could find were the default installation stuff. The system itself seems to be from icaboston.org. Uh, just based on what the gateway addresses and stuff were set to. So I guess they did bother erasing the drives or anything. So, hey, what are you going to do? There wasn't really anything on them in the first place. Uh, just um, the operating system. So uh, we'll get this apart and take a better look. This is the 40 millimeter fan that's installed made by Top Motor Dyna Dyna Eon Dynion? I have no idea. Anyway, it's pretty loud. It seems to be a pretty standard 40 millimeter fan. It uses this weird mounting bracket, which makes it actually very difficult to take out because you think that you take the one screw out and you can just lift the whole assembly out, but no, you have to somehow get these damn screws out and then to it. Uh, annoying. Crappy fan. 
We've got the mounting tray for the hard drive, or in this case, the double uh, bay. It's actually metal. It's not a bad case. I don't see a brand on it. But uh, on the back, we've got serial ATA, two of them, and one power connection. And we've also got the front with the locks, which push open, and you take your hard drive slide it in and this pushes closed and you can see that there's light pipes here to give you drive access indicators most likely power and two drive access indicators pretty cool I'll hang on to that these are always useful especially when it's a decently made one here's the power supply board you can see it's got a big ass diode here and uh, input here it's made by someone, I'm not sure who, <laughs> doesn't really have a name, it's just got like a part number and I can't be bothered to look that up. Oh wait, hang on. Enhance. Well, okay, it's 100 watt maximum, which is funny considering the power supply included is only 80 watts, but it's actually KT series caps on this. I thought they were the... K, uh, KZG, which are the, uh, the crappy ones, but no, they're actually all KY series. KY, I think, is actually a decent series of uh, caps, so this power supply is actually not too bad. I might hang on to it. You can see all the control circuitry along the bottom. I'm not going to bother looking up that stuff, but, you know, decent little power supply. It uses this funky little cable here, which has a um, power supply connector on both ends. Uh, it's got CPU power and serial ATA power and then this little guy which is actually a slimline power connector for a serial, a serial ATA optical drive and it's uh, you know pretty uncommon but I, I guess it's designed for you know a system where you'd have a slimline optical drive and that's it installed and on the other end we've got standard ATX power connector it's got two fairly long serial ATA cables in here, always useful. This is just the serial port header. I took that off to get the case off, nothing too special, it's just a DV9 connector. And we've got the, um, this is the interface from the LCD. Now there's the USB connection and this is the like GPIO connection and it's Oh, sorry, this is the GPIO connection. So these run to the display, and this can do stuff like restart the computer, which is how there's no power supply or power switch on the case. It just powers on because the um, LCD gets power and it automatically sends a power up signal to the motherboard, and it can also do stuff like restart it. So it connects uh, one to the USB connector using this connection, but it's this convoluted wire that, like, look at this. It's running off. It's also got one running off to the header. Now, this header is glued in, and as you can see, it took off the uh, the base of the header when I took it off the motherboard. Here, you can see it goes right here. And uh, this is obviously sending the restart signals and everything to the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just like slice off all this glue so I can uh, put the connector back on this poor thing that I ripped off. Alright, I've got the motherboard hooked up to just this power supply I had hanging around. And if we look in the BIOS, we can see that we've got an AMD Turon, Turian, Turian, uh, 64X2. It's a 2 core, 2.1 gigahertz system with 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty nice, because uh, worst case scenario, I can put that memory in my router and double its memory, because I've only got uh, two 2 gig sticks inside that thing. Uh, one thing I noticed is under the hardware monitor, it says the CPU is 82 degrees, and the external temperature sensor is minus 75 degrees? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to get the CPU fan off anyway, and we'll uh, put on some new thermal grease just in case. So I've popped off the heat sink. It uses this little clipping mechanism, and you 
basically grab a screwdriver and you push down right here and that releases this so you can just pop it off and this is just a pretty cheap aluminum heat sink with a blower fan made by Ada 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 -da. <laughs> who knows anyway never heard of them it makes a fair bit of noise well it's actually not too bad for a blower fan but it's still pretty loud and we've got the main CPU down here now one thing I notice about these memory slots is they're so dims right they're for um, mini ITX boards and uh, stuff like uh, laptops usually uh, small outline dim tiny ones so it's got it's two slots here right and they both have these uh, Kingston 4 gig sticks in them now one thing that's cool is that these fold in so if you have one stick installed you can kinda just fold these down out of the way I've never actually seen sockets that do that moving on to the CPU uh, this one needs to be removed with a screwdriver which I think I have one around here somewhere yeah alright uh, you have to put a screwdriver into this little locking mechanism and undo it and that releases the CPU note the hundred million pins on the AMD chip uh, I believe this is the first time an AMD chip has been found in a piece of networking hardware that I've taken apart I know they do exist um, I know some of the super micro boards are um, AMD based but this is the first time I've actually come across one for myself and if I stop dropping it this is the AMD Turian X64 X2 and as I said in the BIOS it's a 2.1 gigahertz dual core and yeah interesting never really looked at the AMD sockets before impressive going along the motherboard we've got these uh, I think these are KMG caps and I think KMG caps are okay from Nichicon but they are mixed in with these KZG series which are crappy uh, we've got buzzer Realtek audio and I think that's an audio port this is a front audio connector it's a weird one though 32-bit PCI, 16x uh, PCI Express. I don't think it's really 16x. It's probably like a four or something. But it's a physical slot, so you can put in. You could actually put in a real video card here, and it would just uh, um, be limited by the speed of the interface. You got your CF card reader here. I think this is uh, their GPIO, like just general um, expansion port. Oh no, this is the weird, these are the system uh, headers, like the startup um, power LED and that kind of stuff. Two parallel ATA, the power connector, you got the uh, voltage uh, regulator unit for the power supply, or sorry, for the CPU. And you can see all the inductors and stuff like that. USB and serial and whatnot, nothing too special. In here we've got the four pin CPU fan connector and there's another 4 pin fan connector here next to the CMOS battery the north bridge and south bridge have heat sinks on them maybe I'll try and get those off and yeah it's a decent motherboard I'm actually quite impressed with that for a non server brand board here's the pack the KT690 MITX they make a couple other versions some of which have soldered on CPUs and um, other minor differences like firewire and stuff. And hidden underneath here is an M uh, PCI slot. So you can actually put in a wireless card or something under here. Not a bad thing indeed. I think this is just the Super I.O. controller giving you the serial ports and probably Ethernet and stuff like that. Oh, these are probably the Ethernet controllers, Realtek, U. You know, so much for having a nice, reliable uh, PF Sense router. <laughs> no, they do not like Realtek. Just for fun, let's see how Windows 7 works on this thing. I've uh, I just installed the 64-bit Ultimate version, and it did the restart and all that stuff. And you now it's got to restart 800 more times because it is Windows, so uh, it does require at least 1500 restarts before the computer is usable. Well, it 
finally restarted a few more times and now I'm actually in Windows. And you know what? It turns out it's actually not too bad. It's actually quite usable and I don't have the graphics drivers installed right now. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to track down all the drivers for this thing. Um, yeah, it's actually not bad. It would work as a home theater PC. I don't know how well it would be at dec uh, how good it would do at uh, decoding stuff, but hey, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's getting 1.0 in graphics because there's no uh, driver, and even if it did, I think it's an ATI Rage X1900, so it would barely get above 1 anyway. Uh, but yeah, you could always put in a PCI card. Uh, yeah, not too bad on uh, the CPU performance and memory. So yeah, pretty decent little machine. Uh, I'm just going to uh, erase the two drives and then uh, box it up to go because yeah, I don't think I need this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just resell the board and the drives. But it was pretty interesting. Oh, the fan's actually slowing down for once. Um, yeah, I think it was a pretty neat uh, machine. Very, very nicely built. Nice quality system, aside from the few bad caps, which I'll probably replace. Uh, we've got um, some solid caps on it, too. So, yeah, I would say definitely uh, try and pick... You could, you know, if you can pick one of the, these up for under, say, 50 bucks you will make profit off it because of the drives. And it seems that these systems were introduced less than five years ago, so you will be able to replace the drives if they're uh, defective. They're not considered OEM drives. So uh, you can make some money off it, and you can get a decent uh, motherboard. And yeah, not a bad buy. And it was interesting seeing an AMD chip. I never ever get to see those buying networking and uh, enterprise hardware. They just don't use them. Oh, the fans are revving up again. Anyway, uh, like I said before, this won't, wouldn't make a great uh, PFSense board just because PFSense really hates real tech uh, network cards. You could put in a card, of course, but, you know, uh, like I have to. But that kind of ruins the tiny form factor.